Hope everyone's doing good today. Basically, we're going to go over stats before we get into the physical viewing of it. But I got to say, as always, Asus did not let us down. As with their 67 XT, they did a fantastic job with the S. I finally got my hands on a few of them, which sold out as quick as I got them. Actually, got a gigabyte and zotac and a couple other things with some power supplies and a 5950 cpu that's going to go in my in my build that i'm putting together the msi build i spoke about but anyways let's get right to this the um asus rogue strix which is heavy graphics card and they did not let down once again, we're going to go over some things before we get into the visuals of the card itself. A few other things, as far as benchmarks, stuff like that. I've already done that on one of the cards. The cards are gone. I kept one for myself. I couldn't help it. I had to keep it for myself. Okay. Asus definitely... This is definitely their flagship card, hands down. I did a review on the 3090 Tough compared some benchmarks and this actually it kept pretty darn good pace with it if not beat it in a few different things it has a huge triple slot cooler on it the RTX 3080 huge the card itself is a little under 32 centimeters uh, 12 point something inches um, they got away from there I noticed on, on some of the cards, such as the 3090, 3080s, they're getting away from, they, the, the, the board partners are getting away from their traditional stuff. So, they, went, they ended up going, instead of with a 12-pin um, a connector, like they did in some of the other, th the 3000 series, the 3080 Strix ended up going with a three pin power connector. It's a very strong adapter. I like it, I like the looks of it. Um, when you see it, you're not gonna believe it, but I think they said it goes for like a 700 watt. They want a 700 watt power supply. Well, you can tell they're putting three on there. It's gotta be asking for an 850. Um, no doubt and it comes with the three display ports and two two hdmi so we're looking at 1.4 on the displays 2.1 i'm surprised I'm, I'm wondering when they're going to come out with the um with the um hdmi they're still using the 2.1 i know some monitors and some things have been using i think it's the 2.2 that would definitely bring it up to being as fast as a display port so if not faster so people would definitely end up changing over on that as far as um overall overall things on it the card when you see it and hold it you realize it speaks for itself So, as I said, I'm doing this a little bit differently, and I'm going to get ready. We're going to look over some specs and stuff in a minute, so it's worth it. You're going to love it. All right, so we have the card still in the box. I got a um, few motherboards. One of them I thought you might be interested in is the, uh, I liked it. I know they make some higher end boards, but I found this one in the middle ground. It's the B550. Um, they do make the um, the 570, which is a nice board. It says it comes 5,000 ready. And, and let me explain to you about the ready pot on these motherboards. Just a real quick rundown. Ready means it means it's ready to be upgraded through BIOS. It doesn't mean it comes ready to throw a card on it and run it. I found that out there. <laughs> But in, as far as middle ground goes, this um, the E Gamer, which is better than the F, in many ways. 
they look similar, but there, there are some some slight differences that do make improvements on this. The E-Gamer Strix, the Rogue Strix is a very nice board. Okay, to run down quick on the specs, we have a, a standard bus, PCI Express 4.0 with an OpenGL of 4.6, video memory 10 gigabytes of DDR6X. With the 3080s, the 3090s, they are using the higher grade memory that's basically the X. When you see just the plain DDR6, it's not as an effective memory. It's good memory. It's not as effective. This X version, it doesn't mean it's a lot faster or even much faster, but it's just a better memory that's made to carry the instructions and handle the power better. It's a finer tuned, better made memory. Um, we have 8,704 CUDA cores with a memory bus speed of 19 gigabytes. Memory interface 320. A lot of this is basically the same, so I'm just running over it quick. It's 4K resolution if you want to max it out, no problem. It ha it'll handle 7680 by 4320 with an interface, yes, of display ports and HDMI, which we already went over. Um, a maximum display at one time is four. It handles the NVLink, they call it, Crossfire support. I'm not sure. Are they still using Crossfire? Or is it just all SLI? I, I, I'm not, I, I get a look up on that. Okay, for accessories, and we'll go over that, it, it, it comes with um, basically a pamphlet, a little ruler, and a little aluminum plate that goes on the back plate of the card, and you'll get to take a look at that in a few minutes. Um, it comes with a collection card. And it comes with a manual. The software used to tweak it is exactly what it is. A A Asus GPU Tweak 2. Haven't had a chance really to mess around with it, but I did look at it and it looks pretty good. Looks pretty sturdy. Um, gives you some quick and easy options to get to some slight overclocking on the card if that's what you're into. Um, it comes with studio drivers so basically all the all the software drivers bios if you decide to do bios it needs to be downloaded the dimensions on it as i said a little under 32 centimeters but we're going to get into the inches it's 12.53 it's 5.51 wide with a thickness of 2.7 basically it's a 3.9 it takes up three bays recommended power supply I seen somewhere where they somebody must have made a mistake and put 700 but recommend recommends 850 watts I don't think you really need more if you got more it ain't gonna hurt if it's a good 80 plus power supply I think you'd be fine it comes with the three eight pin connectors really looks nice when you get if you use cable extensions and all three three times eight 24 so it looks like you got a big 24 cable running into it it's 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 pretty insane looking um 2.9 slots as far as benchmarks go oh i had fun with the other one i didn't get too crazy with it and i i, I use all 3d mark so with fire strike extreme on extreme settings the Strix beat pretty much the Strix OC which this version is they they they, they, they do make a 3090 that has some better numbers than this but for the $1100 difference I don't see where that's relevant it's it just doesn't make sense so the 30, this 3080 OC definitely outpaces the non-OC 3080, the RTX, the regular RTX. Okay, I got um, on Fire Strike. 
I ended up getting a score on 1440 at around 22.4. I'm sorry, 20. 20,470.68, somewhere around there. Okay, the um, other cards that it went up to, none of them, none of them beat it. They, they all, some of them came close, but they didn't beat it. The only one that I think would probably pull ahead of it would be the, uh, the Pally. Time Spy score, I got a high score on that of and it was a little bit better. Time Spy is a little bit different. 4K at 1440, we were looking at around 16.8, close to 17. Port Royal score was a 12,000. Not shabby. The regular got a, um, the regular Strix pulled a 11.7, 11, something like that. And I went over to the uh, super position, and we ended up pulling a score out on that one that was around 24.8. I got one score that was a little bit closer to 25.3, about 25,003. Not too shabby there. The regular non-OC version got like a 22. I would have to say not even 20. No, it did a little better than that. It did a 23, you say a 23.4. Now remember, I'm not running on a 5950. I'm using a 5800. And this is with everything going. I'm talking about running the whole nine yards. I've got antivirus, um, antivirus, Razor program running the clouds up. Uh, um, the stream. I mean, I, I've got all kinds of stuff running here. At 1080, the thing just crushed it. Um, Ten eighty. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Fire, far cry. The 3080 OC 142. In Far Cry. These are all synthetic benchmarks, pretty much. Um, Assassin's Creed got around a hundred. The 3090, the MSI 3090 got less. I ended up only getting a 99 on that one. The regular Strix only got a, one, got a 101, a little bit under the 3090. I don't want to get all into the FEs and everything. Again, the 3090 in Metro Exodus pulled ahead a little bit. Just a couple of points. I'd say around three points at about a 139. 139 up against, say, a 135, 136 on the um, higher is better, obviously. So the Asus, regular Asus RTX 3080, pulled around a 125. So we're looking at some good scores all the way around. So we can keep going and going and going and going. But all in all, at 1440, this card crushes it. The 3090 starts to pull ahead. That's where you see the 3090 shine. 4K, that's where they walk away with the crown. And when I mean walk away, I'm only talking around 5, 8 frames. Nothing fantastic for the other 12, 13, 11, 12, 1300. So on that note, we're going to pretty much wrap this all up and come back and we're going to do a visual inspection. Okay, I was going to do an unboxing, but, oops. Sorry, forgot to put my mic on.
take a swig of coffee. All right, this is what everybody's been waiting for. I was gonna do an unboxing, but you know something? Everybody's seen an unboxing before, an unboxing's an unboxing. Okay, so here we have it. The Rogue Strix 3080. The front plate on it, or the front shroud I should say. It's made of a nice quality plastic. You can see it's little tabs or rivets or some type of screws they use to hold it down. And it appears to me, I haven't taken the plastic off of a lot of this stuff yet, but it appears to me that we have 13 blades on the two outer fans. I'm sorry, 11 blades, a 13 in the center. The two outside blades spin in the same direction which would be clockwise. The center one is counterclockwise. What it does is it gives the the card the opportunity to move the, fa the, to move the air in two different ways. One of them it's kicking the air this way and down the other one as it's spinning it's pushing up and out all right it has it's a beautiful card Whew, it's big okay it's got a great this is something asus does i haven't seen on a lot of cards but it has a fantastic plate this is a dual heat sink basically it comes in two pieces has a nice support bracket that does go all the way around the cot itself. As you can see, it's a plastic support bracket, probably runs right through the center, and it does definitely give it a lot of support. A nice clean look to it. There's not an auto overkill on the ARGB which we have right here. Doesn't appear to be anything on the back plate, which we'll get to in a minute. Front plate has kind of a metal look to it. Silverish, chrome. I would like to see gun metal myself. I seen someone else mention it. Okay, game on down in the corner. Then we have the um, I guess I don't really know what that is over here. Serial number something. Anyways, Rogue Strix up here. This is what I found kind of weird. Oh, and in the background, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got kind of a subdued, kind of ghost out Rogue Strix, you know, kind of faded into the, the, the metal look of it. So that's kind of cool. This is what I found really weird. So when the card's sitting in there, obviously it goes in any machine, goes in this way. On the back of it, the ROG is upside down. Doesn't make sense to me. It, it, it just doesn't, no matter how you cut it. Even if you do, if you do a vertical, if you do a vertical mount, you still have the ROG running up when I could understand the ROG going down. So I think that might have been something that, I don't know, but in order for the ROG to be spelt left to right, it would have to be, the card would have to be upside down. So ASUS, maybe you might want to take a look at that because as, as little of a thing as, as that is, for me, it's kind of like, ew, kind of annoys me a little bit because it just doesn't make sense. All right. Again, typically, you can see in the back plate itself, in the back of the plate, it has the two screw holes for the imaginary bracket that nobody has come up and invented yet. So, again, it would be a bracket that runs straight down or up. However, they did it, if they could attach it to the top of the case, but it would make more sense for a bracket to run down, be adjustable something flat that's screwed in here 
and gave the back of the card support. Honestly, doesn't really need it as long as the card's in there good. Okay, so we have our Asus emblem here as we do on the two outer fans in ROG dead center. This is a little bit different. It's basically a piece of plastic. Kind of protrudes a little bit. I like it and I don't in a way. I think it's good to hold on to. All right. Awesome job on the heat sink. The fins. Asus, you hit the nail on the head. And th this card has just about everything you could think of in it. it it's, it's a gorgeous card. Your three eight pin connectors. Again, they're getting away from their, their newer the, the board partners are getting away from this uh, 12 pin thingy, which I just, I can't stand it. it. Some people might like it. It might make sense to some people. To me, I think it's, it's horrifying. <laughs> okay. The card itself. Three dis display ports, an HDMI, an HDMI, one over the other. Again, that subdued kind of chrome look to the... A blackish chrome look however they do it but it's cool looking okay on to the back of the card we definitely have a plastic slash carbon fiber to look to it it doesn't go with the newer bigger little chips that go on on the board itself Again, also the PCB is probably six layers thick, or at least I would say five with some copper in there. It's very well made. And it comes with the the bracket. A little bit different of a design than some of them. It's a little more squared off. Nice, it's neat looking. Get a little texture to the back of the car. Card, card, car. You got your G-Force over here, RTX. It does come with dual bios. If you go towards the back of the card or the front of the card, I don't know, some people call it one thing, some people call it the other, okay? If you go towards the bracket, you're in performance mode. If you push this little button, which it is kind of tough to get to, I think they could have made that a little easier. It goes into game mode. Performance mode ups the RPMs. Game mode kind of brings it down a little bit because unless you're overclocking, you really don't need some crazy, crazy stuff. Wow, what a nice job. It's a big card, peep, people. It, it, it's huge. They did a great job. I think the design of the card is, is just outstanding. It's definitely thicker, definitely a little longer than the 68 version they made, than the 3060, the 3080. It, it, it has to be. It's just, it's that big. I haven't seen really a support bracket out there that's made for it. Myself, I usually like to use one. All right. Back here. Again, what I wanted to talk about, and I mentioned it in other parts of the videos. Uh, we got some, oh, we also have, if you want to sync it up to your board, your motherboard you have two four pin 12 volt rgb connectors where you can run your wiring connect it up sync it up it's stored in memory in here you can set it to whatever you want it to be blinking runway rainbow whatever effect you're looking for shut it off unplug it remove it and then when you want to reset it you have to do it from here if you want to sync it to the board myself i don't i just let it go and do its thing and it usually looks like it's in like a runway mode okay real quick this is what we were talking about came with a little six inch ruler and also came with this little plate on the back of it you can peel it off it's got like a sticky on it now, if you look at this, and I think this is the, probably one of the reasons other than getting the ASUS emblem back on the back, you can see there's a hefty plug with, a, with some wires that, that, that's made to control the fans. I think what they were looking at with this was taking this 
Now, if you're gonna run this in a vertical position, you're absolutely gonna to need to pull the, the paper off the back of it so it sticks on. If it's laying down, it kinda of can fall right into a groove. You lose a little bit of airflow for pushing air out, but it comes with a hole in it for the screw. And it, it hides that little, that little, um, that little slot where you can see the wires going through myself. It doesn't bother me. Oh, we have a little subdued, little, it's kind of quiet. Republic of Gamers kind of faded into the back here. Again, as you can see. So if you leave it open, it does kind of look like it's missing something. They could have just put a little, maybe plastic mesh over it to hide it, but Hey, Asus just still did a great job. So I think that does kind of dress it up a little bit. Kind of makes the whole picture. All right, the next part of this video, you'll see it back in the, you'll see it in the machine. Back in the machine. Well, I have had it in the machine. That's why I kind of had, a, I've broken this video up into, a, to the, I wanted to do a different format on this video. I'm trying to get things improved. I actually have my cameras and, and I've already got my mics and I've got some cameras coming in, but that, that's besides the point. Um, we'll be back with the final part of this in a minute. Get to take a look at it in. Okay, I am back for another part of this video. Don't wanna make it too long. I am trying to learn how to shorten things up a bit, but here we have it, the card's in. Setup was easy, easy peasy. It was a breeze nice looking card as you can see here we have that little plate i was speaking about again it does have some plastic film on the back that you can peel off so you can stick it on them and it would you know permanently attach itself well unless you wanted to pull it off but you really don't have a need for it if you just want to rest it on there so basically as i had said it just made the kind of fall in made of aluminum. I wouldn't leave it loose if you're gonna move the case around much, but kinda just gotta adjust it and hear it click in there so it kinda falls right in. You have your three eight pin connectors. Three times eight, 24. So basically what I used was the cable guides I ended up putting on here were made for a 24 pin PSU just to keep them all in line instead of putting the three the three eights so one thing I noticed about it is the way they make this line here it kind of gives it the illusion that the card kind of looks crooked but with a level on it it's not it's perfectly and, and again I was talking about the support bracket. I was gonna use this under it. I did see a way it could fit. I'm not gonna bother. The card's got no sag. It's nice, it's steady, and if you're not moving the case around, I don't see no reason to worry about it. But it kinda of gives it the illusion that the card's thinner towards the back than it is towards, I guess, well, front, back, back, front. Again, preference. It's, but it's not. It's, it's identical. It's the same exact width from one end to the other. It's just the way they put this in. It's kind of like, this is what it is right here. The RGB lighting is a little bit shorter, a little bit lower on this corner and a little bit lower on this corner. This corner being covered, this one not, it gives it that impression of, I don't know, kind of widening out there. But there we have it. The RTX ASUS 3080 OC version. Gotta love it. I know I do. Beautiful card. Again, there's really nothing to look at on the top other than its beautiful design, but there's no lighting on it. And the fans themselves. I'm wondering if you use the two 12 pin ARGBs in the back if there's something you can program in using that aura program that they use that will activate the lighting so you can have some background lighting in those fans um 
if you're running it vertical with the three fans showing facing out again I'm not sure I never really use them I've seen them on a couple different cards such as the the sapphire nitro um, uses it it's one pin and I think it's ARGB this one is RGB it doesn't have the three pin it's the 12 volt four pin so I am running this system with an MSI carbon Wi-Fi X570 motherboard I'm using a 58x chip in here I do have a 59 and a 5950 I was actually thinking about putting it in but for what I do I really don't need it I don't do enough heavy graphics I don't do enough of that to put a a bigger one even in gaming it's not going to make a lot of a difference because the chip itself in single core isn't a lot more powerful than this eight core um, but when it comes to multitasking video editing you're definitely going to want to go up to the the um the 59 which is a 12 or the 5950 which is a 16. 5950 is 799 i think it's more like four seven ninety nine I think maybe five hundred five nine. I'm I'm not sure. I can't remember what the difference is in price. Five ninety nine, six ninety nine. I think it's about a hundred dollars difference going from the fifty nine, fifty nine, fifty. But we're not getting into prices here. Um, I'm gonna be doing another video very shortly. I think I'm gonna be doing it on a um, an MSI card, a thirty seventy that I have coming in. I haven't done one yet on that type of a card. It's a two fan. It's a nice looking card. Um, I have a couple other ones and a couple other things. I do have some other boards I'm going to be going over in the future. Um, I was going to do a video in the past on the uh, MSI. I know I like MSI stuff. I know there's been a lot of things in the past that MSI has popped up in the news about, but hey, what their people do is their business. They still make a good product. Um, yeah so I'm gonna be doing a unify and there's another board that I wanted to do there's also a, a there's the Asus Dark Hero I, I'm gonna be getting one of those and there's a number of things I'm gonna be doing some benchmarks on a 5950 so I'm definitely gonna to have to put one in but that's neither here or there right now anyways here we have it the Asus 3080 again asus thank you you put a lot of thought into this you really did I've, I've done a lot i've done quite a few reviews i've been doing computers for 20 years i've only been doing reviews probably for the last 12 months and i have to say out of all the cards that i've looked at this is no doubt one of the nicest looking stablest well put together rounded cards i have seen the price point is right on the money. You're looking at about eight hundred and something dollars at the at the actual price right now. This MSRP thing, these people are getting fanatical with it. There's no such thing no more. The suggested price, what they suggested, everybody call it MSRP. That didn't happen because of the current events going on in the world, but it is what it is. That was the suggested price. I paid eight something for the card with taxes. I know they're going for a lot more than that over on eBay and Facebook and Craigslist and other places. Um, and then you have actual price. The actual price is basically what you can actually get it for. And if it's gonna cost you $1,200, it's gonna cost you $1,200. I know it sucks, but on Facebook, I, I I literally deleted my Facebook account. I couldn't stand to listen to people tell people what to do anymore. Especially shame on those people that got to go on there and say, well, not shame on them. Shame on the morons that have been on there forever. 
running these sites where they say they're going to help, but then when these people go on and say, hey, I'm doing a new build, I can get my hands on a Gigabyte 3070, but it costs this much. The first thing you do is you get 20 people come telling the guy, no, don't get it. Too much money. You know something? Don't ask people. If you know, if you can afford it and it makes you happy, get it. Nobody tells you how much to spend on a car. Nobody tells you how much to spend on a house. And nobody certainly tells you how much to spend on your food. The same goes for this. People rely on other people's opinions too much. And we all know what opinions are like. I like a bunch of buttholes. And they all got one. And most of them are big. Um, so, if you come across something and it's reasonable, you can afford it, get it. If it's more than what you think, but you really want it, you get it. If it makes you happy, fine. As long as it's not taking food off the table for the kids, who cares? I would have paid if I wanted this card bad enough and I wasn't in the business that I am in. I would have paid twelve, thirteen hundred dollars for this card. You bet your butt I would have because it's what I want. And if I can afford it and it's not going to affect how my living goes or my kids getting fed or anything else, I don't care what anybody's got to say. It's all how I feel at the end of the day. And if it makes you happy to get it, get it. Don't ask anybody for any advice because I'm going to tell you the last thing you want to do is ask anybody for advice because what they're going to tell you is how they feel, especially the ones that can't get it. They don't want to see anybody getting it. That's just the way it is. People are like that. They always will be. Not everyone, but most. I hope none of them are watching this video. Anyways, this is how we're going to wrap it up. You got a little bit of rundown on some on some benchmarks. Got a rundown on an after overboxing and a review look, uh, an overview of what the card looks like. And now you get to see it in. I hope everybody enjoyed this. Please remember, give me a thumbs up. It's really going to help my site out. It, it, it's helping the growth. It's helping me learn, helping me learn how to improve. And you people are the people that really help me with all that. Not me. You, you, you point me in the direction you give me the guidance, and I appreciate it. So everybody, stay safe, stay strong. Peace out. Peace, peace, peace. May the force be with you.